What we're going to be doing today is deriving the velocity equation in simple harmonic motion. Now imagine that you have a simple harmonic oscillator, for instance uh, a pendulum, it could be approximated by simple harmonic motion for small angles. So let's say that this over here is our pendulum, let's draw a little pendulum across here. Then there we go, this is a fixed point, and let's say that the pendulum is here. The velocity at any point during this simple harmonic motion can be given by an expression that is actually given in our formula booklet. And that expression is that the velocity is equal to plus or minus omega, which is our angular frequency, multiplied by the square root of a squared minus x squared. Now my question that uh, we're gonna be looking at today is where does this equation come from? We know that x is given by either a cosine omega t or x is equal to a sine omega t, depending on the initial conditions, but we don't actually know where this equation comes from. Well, let's have a go at deriving it today. Just before we do so though, just a quick little recap, which is always useful. Remember, in simple harmonic motion, the velocity will always be zero when we are at our maximum displacement or the amplitude. So in this case, right over here, the velocity will be zero. And this is because a is equal to x. So in other words, the velocity will be equal to plus or minus the square root of a squared minus a squared, which is of course zero. And this is applicable to both this position and this position. The maximum speed in uh, of a simple, simple harmonic oscillator will be happening at the equilibrium position and V max will be equal to plus or minus omega, the square root of A squared minus zero, which is plus or minus omega A. Okay, so now that we've recapped this, let's have a go at our derivation. So in order to do so, we're going to need a little bit of calculus. You would have probably learned where, while studying mathematics that if you have a, an expression for the displacement, its time derivative is equal to the velocity. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write this down over here on the side. So uh, dx by dt it will actually be our velocity. So I'm going to just pick one of those uh, expressions. The derivation will work uh, which, uh, with, with whichever one we actually pick, depending on the initial conditions. But let's pick just uh, sine omega t. So I'm going to say that my velocity is going to equal to the time derivative of uh, a sine omega t. So our velocity will be d by dt of this expression a sine omega t. Okay, well, because our amplitude, assuming that there's no friction, that our amplitude is constant, we can take that outside of the derivative. So uh, this will be equal to a d by dt multiplied by the derivative of sine omega t. Well, we're going to need to use the chain rule to perform this um, um, this derivative because this is a function of a function. It's not just a sine of t, it's sine of omega t. If you're a little bit rusty on the chain rule, I'm going to leave a link in the description at uh, my explanation of the chain rule with quite a few examples. But let's apply this in this case. So v will now be equal to a times the derivative of the function inside, which is omega t. So I'm going to write this in as many steps as possible. So this will be equal to d by dt of uh, omega t, like so. I'm going to put in some brackets even, multiplied by the derivative of the, um, of the, of the outside function, which is sine of omega t. Actually, let's just uh, write it down as the derivative being the cosine omega t, because remember, the derivative of sine is cos. 
Okay, well, the uh, first derivative is actually pretty straightforward. So our velocity is going to equal to a. And if I differentiate omega t with respect to t, all I'm going to get is omega. So I'm going to have the amplitude multiplied over by omega multiplied by cosine omega t. And this is my expression for the velocity. And this is an absolutely true expression. However, notice that these two expressions are really different. How could that be? I mean, look at it. Mathematically, this expression has to be exactly the same as this expression. How could this be? Well, I see a square root here. I see an a squared minus x squared. And that reminds me of some trig identities. So what trig identity could I possibly be using? Because I see the square root, let's try the following trig identity. So how about, let's say that we have theta, so sine of theta squared plus cosine of theta squared is actually equal to one. So one of the most famous trig identities. So let's just rearrange that for cos of theta, so cos theta squared will be equal to 1 minus sine of theta squared, which means that cos of theta will be equal to the square root of 1 minus sine of theta squared. Well, in exactly the same way, let's just replace, replace theta with omega t. And uh, because of that, cos of omega t will actually be equal to the square root of 1 minus sine of omega t. And that sine, the whole expression is squared. Okay, we're definitely getting somewhere. We still haven't quite got the a squared. Well, what we're going to get is that v is equal to our amplitude times omega times run the cos. I'm just going to write this expression here, which is the square root of 1 minus the sine omega t and this is squared. Okay, well, we're nearly there. So my next step would be simply to realize that I have an a squared here inside of the root and I have an a here. So we could just represent this amplitude as, let's write down the omega, the angular frequency first, and this will be equal to a squared, square rooted, that's just a, multiply by 1 minus sine omega t squared, which is going to equal now omega. Now we can just multiply the two square roots, which will be equal to um, a squared times 1 minus sine omega t, all of it squared. I'm writing this in as many step, uh, steps as possible, just so that I can be as clear as possible. And this will be equal to omega times the square root of a squared minus, uh, then we're going to have a squared sine omega t squared. Well, hang on a minute, a squared sine omega t squared, uh, this is basically what we started off with, but square rooted, which is just this expression that's been square rooted. And this expression is just x. So now we've actually managed to derive our equation because we can now say that v, our speed of the harmonic oscillator is equal to w times the square root of a squared minus x squared. Okay guys, now we know how to use this equation incredibly well, but we also are fully aware of where this equation comes from, which is a very, very important skill in physics and the understanding of the subject of actually thinking where the equation